Hello and thanks for clicking on that little white triangle on your computer screen and watching my third video blog. It's November, it's getting cold, the nights are drying in, so I didn't want to go too far this month. We've just come up the road to my local from my house. This is the Jolly Butchers, officially London's most improved pub. And it's not hard to see why. There's a great range of British cask ales on, as well as a range of craft beers from around the world. There's a new kitchen that churns out really, really wonderful food. And the staff are friendly and so passionate about beer that when they're not on that side of the bar serving it, they're over here drinking it. It's almost a home from home. In June 2008, uh, Jamie and Lizzie Brodie took over a pub in Leighton, about three miles that way, uh, and started brewing beer in the, in the brewery attached to the pub. They used a recipe that Jamie originally used to brew beer in his bath, but it proved surprisingly popular with the regulars. Since then, Jamie's brewed 50 different beers, and this is one of the latest ones. This is Brodie's uh, Gold Organic, made with full organic ingredients. Now, the remarkable thing about this beer is it's only 3.5%. And the ingredients that you put into beer determine its strength and determine its flavour. If you've got a low alcohol beer, it doesn't have much strength, obviously. It doesn't have, have that much flavour either. To compensate for that, what Jamie's done is piled in lots and lots of hops in this to give it that big bouquet and aroma. But whereas a lot of hoppy beers these days would give you very big floral citrusy flavours, this one doesn't. It's still really light. It's kind of like the uh, beer equivalent of a spritzer. Uh, so it's the, uh, it's the beer you can enjoy at lunchtime without spoiling your afternoon or drink it out of a glass like this instead and it's a great aperitif to have before a really nice dinner. When brewing ended at the Young's Brewery in Wandsworth in 2006, London was left with just two breweries in operation, Fuller's in Jizzick and Meantime in Greenwich. That was a disgraceful state of affairs for the nation's capital, which has given birth to some of the best beer styles that we know across the world today. One man who wanted to do something about that was Duncan Sandbrook, a city accountant who decided brewing would be more fun, and he decided to fill the Young's shaped hole that had been left in South London. His first beer was Wandel, uh, named after the river in Wandsworth that Young's used to take their water from, and it's kind of a, a slightly fuller bodied version of Young's Bitter, which is still brewed today in Bedford. And the thing about this beer is it's 3.8%, it's incredibly balanced, it slips down effortlessly. It's a great British, a great London session pint. We're getting a lot of new flavours and influences coming into British brewing at the moment, and they're producing some fantastic beers. But the thing about a beer like this is, it's what British brewers can do really well, which brewers around the world cannot do. A, a beer that's less than 4%, that is just back, packed with flavour and really satisfying to drink. Now, when it was first built, this would have been a classic example of the late Victorian ornate decorated London pub. Uh, we can see from what's left on the on the walls of the windows that it was incredibly highly decorated. There's wonderful glass and, and, and ironwork. The bar used to be in the middle and around the sides it would have been divided up into little snugs, compartments uh, with etched glass and so on. We're hearing the news quite a lot about the 40 or so pubs a week that are closing. What we don't hear about is the main trend that I've seen this year which is a lot of those pubs be, having been boarded up and left and presumably left for dead, reopening with the emphasis on great beer and great conversation. And this is a perfect example of that. In fact, it's the best example I know of the real renaissance that's happening in British craft brewing, because this pub didn't exist a year ago in this state. More to the point, all these beers on the bar, three years ago, none of those breweries were operating. They're all brand new. Uh, Wandel opened in 2008, Camden this year, Brode is 2008, Redemption and Colonel both open this year. Three of these five brewers are less than a year old and the fact that we've got this festival on here is just testament to the huge revolution that's happening just now. London's given birth to two of the greatest beer styles on the planet. The first one of those we're going to talk about is India Pale Ale. That's a beer that's obsessed me for the past few years. It was originally perfected as a style uh, in Bow on the banks of the Thames, just about three or four miles down the road from here in East London. And since then, it went on huge adventures around the world. It's a style that's been out of fashion, come back into fashion, and been revived by American brewers. And what we're seeing now is young London brewers being influenced in turn by the American brewers and recreating these beers, creating these clash between old traditional brewing techniques and new technology and new ingredients. This is from the Colonel Brewery. It's a London brewed indie pale ale by a brewer who's been going almost a year now, influenced by the new world, influenced by America and, and with Southern Hemisphere hops. And it's um, the thing you notice about it, indie, indie pale ale was always famous for being a hoppy beer. And hop gives, hops give you citrus aromas. This just absolutely sings out with really zingy grapefruit. And when you taste it, 
I mean, it's like it's like sherbet at first. It's just really kind of bittersweet, incredible fruit, and then it mellows a bit, and you get um, more passion fruit and uh, apricot. It's a real tropical fruit salad of a beer, all from the hops. Before India Pale Ale, London's real first love of beer was porter. It was a drink of the Industrial Revolution, the universal cordial of the populace, and it was brewed for the first time in Shoreditch, about a mile and a half down the road that way. We are in the home of porter, one of the world's greatest beer styles. And about a mile and a half up the road that way is the Redemption Brewery, which opened about a year and a half ago, and this is their first porter that they've just brewed uh, this month. Now, when I was talking about beer flavours sometimes being hard to pin down, that is not the case with a good porter. The flavours in porter sometimes punch you in the face with just how strong they are. This, on the nose, gives you huge, huge hints of uh, coffee and chocolate, tiny bit of vanilla, and a real hint of tobacco as well. There's a smokiness about it. All those flavours come through on the palate, together with a little bit of sherry, a kind of slight whiny note. But it's just a beer that maybe you couldn't drink a few pints of it, but you would want to. It's just absolutely full of flavour. And Porter was extinct 30 years ago. Hardly anyone brewed it. Now it's back in the heart of London. And beers like this are just, it's just great that they're being brewed again. I've lived in London for nearly 20 years now, and it's not always been easy to get a good drink here. When the microbrewery revolution started, London seemed to lag behind the rest of the country a little bit but it's now caught up and it's caught up with a vengeance. I do think there's never been a better time to be in Britain drinking beer. And certainly now in London, while I've been living here, there's never been a better time to drink beer. I can't believe it was just spent a, an afternoon in a pub, which is my local, the Jolly Butchers, five minutes walk from my house, drinking fantastic beers, none of which existed three or four years ago, but they exist now and they're absolutely wonderful. And it's a pleasure to drink them. Cheers.